Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast. I'm your host, Brian, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about promotion, specifically the differences between free and paid music promotion. This is a widely talked about topic. Basically, anytime you look at any music group on Facebook or any other place, people are always asking about music marketing. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to break down what I feel are the two main categories of music marketing, which are the paid and the free versions. Before we jump into that, I want to say congratulations because of this past week, just a few days ago, the CIAS podcast hit 10 thousand downloads. That honestly is wild to us. You know, this idea of doing this podcast, we started in September of 2020. And to think that it's been listened to over 10,000 times now at this point is honestly so amazing because, you know, a lot of these episodes are anywhere from 10 minutes to over an hour long. So it's not like just streaming a song where it's usually, you know, three or four minutes long. This is a lot of time that people have spent digging in and being encouraged by these episodes. So first of all, I want to say thank you for listening. It's honestly our honor to keep putting out these episodes, and we're going to keep doing it every week for as long as it's encouraging you along your journey. So thank you for listening. And if this is your first time, this is the 78th episode being uploaded. So there's a ton of backlog catalog for you to check out, and I hope that you do. And if you're like me, you probably start at the beginning and then move your way up. And it might take you a while to catch up to present day, but it might be fun along the way. So again, thank you. 10,000 downloads. That is amazing. So now let's jump into free versus paid promo. So the way that we promote our music is honestly crucial to its impact that it can make. If you do any type of YouTube or Google search, you'll find thousands and thousands of videos and articles all about the best way to promote your music. And of course, this is super subjective because a lot of times there's not only too many options, but a lot of the options can be conflicting and it can recreate a ton of confusion on which way is the best. Now, I'm not going to just add to that pile and say this, what I'm talking about today is the best because I'm not going to necessarily give what you should do. I'm just going to tell you what I've done on both sides of the free and the paid side so it can hopefully inform your decision to know what's right for you. And a key to all this is that what might work for you today may not and honestly hopefully won't work in a year from now because you're going to be evolving. You're going to be trying new things. You're going to be experimenting. You're going to be building your audience. And so your strategies on the marketing side will change and evolve too. So flexibility is key to always kind of staying ahead of the curve and knowing what's going to work for your music best today. And again, by no means is this going to be a comprehensive list of every possible marketing strategy because that would take a lot of episodes. That'd probably be an entire another 78 episodes of the podcast, but I just want to share with you my experiences to hopefully inform you and making your choices as you are getting your music out there and using different marketing tactics to help it get maximum reach. So I've got three paid options and then three free options. So let's start with the free options. So the first option is directly pitching your music to Spotify curators. Now, how do you do this? The way that I've done it along the way is I'll go onto Spotify, I'll search playlists and I'll find songs or artists or playlists that I think fit the genre and vibe of the song I'm trying to pitch. In that case, then I go and I try to locate the curator's name. And a lot of times on Spotify, people use their Facebook profile to sign in to Spotify. So that's helpful to actually find their actual name in their photo. So once I find those things, then I'll usually go over to Facebook or Instagram. But most of the time in my experience, it's been Facebook, find the curator and then send them a polite message. Something saying like, hey, my name is blank and I found your playlist and I usually say the name of the playlist and I say it's really awesome because I believe it's actually awesome. I'm just saying it's awesome because I think it really is awesome. And then I say, I have a song that I think might fit your list. Also, and I throw this in there too. Also, you know, I'd love to promote your playlist if you're open to that. So just let me know and then I'll send a link. And if you'd like to see an exact template email that I've sent hundreds of times to playlists, click the link below and there's a guide within the bundle of guides below that's called the Spotify Curator Guide. And if you get that guide, then you will have the exact template that I've used hundreds of times to pitch my own music and the music of others to curators on Spotify. And one big benefit of using this method is over time, you're going to build relationships with these curators. It won't be quite as difficult to find them because you'll already kind of have them. And not to say you have a list per se, but you have people that you've worked with and have supported you in your music and become fans of what you do. So then it becomes much easier to send them new music along the way 
way because they're already kind of into and already a fan of what you do. So number two of the free promotion tools is build your own Spotify playlist. Now, honestly, Spotify playlists are one of the most valuable assets in today's streaming world because if you have a great playlist, if you're the curator of a great playlist, you can reach lots and lots of people. I mean, that is why the editorial playlists are sort of the holy grail of the streaming on Spotify because they reach a lot of people all the time. So if you can have a list of your own that can do that, then you can reach a lot of people all the time, not only for other people's music, but also for yourself. So a couple tips on building Spotify playlists, build lists that you love and that you wanna to listen to over and over again. Honestly, even though this sounds simple and maybe even counterintuitive, this is like the most important part about building playlists is that you have to love them and you have to listen to them because there are probably millions, tens of millions of Spotify playlists and most of them have zero followers because people build them and may not even listen to them. But if you build a playlist and you actually listen to it because you love it, because you love the songs, you love the flow, you've considered all of that stuff, then you're gonna be listening to it and that's gonna show the algorithm that at least one person is listening to it and it may start auditioning it to other people and then over time it will grow. Now, of course, you could post about your playlist on social media. You could email your email list about these things you could even run ads on these things. I haven't personally run ads, but I know people who have run ads successfully on Spotify playlists. So it's definitely something to consider as well on the paid side. But building a playlist or multiple playlists of your own, I have a ton of Christian indie artists and songwriters playlists. There's an indie Christian, there's an indie worship. I have one called Christian Pop Vibes. I have one called Daniel Fast. I have one called Henry Jams, which is my son's favorite sync pump up music. We listen to that playlist all the time in the car. We have a bunch of playlists that we listen to at all kind of different parts of the day, different times of the week. So I would suggest you do the same thing because you never know when one of your plays could take off and it could be a great way to get impact for free on your own music. And number three for free music promotion is using social media. And I know you're already thinking about it. There's a million people on social media. How am I supposed to break through? How can I possibly use it without running ads like I see all these people doing to actually make impact? Well, I would say that social media can be an amazing tool. I talk about it all the time and I think one of the biggest things is actually just being yourself, which for whatever reason is the hardest thing for us to do, myself included, is to just be ourselves and be okay with that, with all of our glorious flaws and imperfections and just putting ourselves out there. Because ultimately, yes, there are billions of people on Instagram and TikTok and social media in general, but... If we are able to do anything and make any amount of impact, it's only gonna be through our real authentic selves. Sure, there's a lot of people out there that are doing things other than that and have maybe big numbers, but I don't know if that's gonna be a lasting thing because ultimately we're on social media to point people back to what we're doing in our music, but that all comes with ourselves, putting ourselves out there, telling our story, being real. And when we're real, that's when people actually can connect with us. They can't connect with the best version of ourselves or what we project, what we think people want us to be because there's nothing to grab onto because there's no relatability there. People can relate to flaws because we all have them. People can relate to weaknesses because we all have them. It's a lot more difficult to relate to this stoic, perfect picture of something that we hope to be or want to be or look at someone else and, and covet that thing. So be yourself, put yourself out there. People will be drawn to that authenticity. And of course, as you roll out your music, they'll be a fan of you first, and then they'll love your music too. And that is a great way to use another free platform like social media to market and promote our music. And before we move on to the paid promotions, would you do me a huge favor and hit the like button? It's the best way for this video to get out to encourage other Christian indie artists and songwriters just like you to get their songs heard, and I would really appreciate it. So now I want to jump over to the paid promotion options. Now, Honestly, for a long time, I was hesitant to ever talk about paid promotion stuff just because there's so much bad press out there. There's so many scams. There's so many things out there that don't ever really point to actually helping you. Like I said, it might push your numbers up. It might make you feel good. It might have great vanity metrics, but it could just be bots or whatever. So 
I was always hesitant to talk about that, but now I feel like it's really important to kind of get out the correct information, at least in my own experience, on what could actually work because you can definitely spend money on your music to promote it and it can definitely work and definitely help you. And so those are the kind of things I want to talk about here. These three things I want to talk about here to help you make educated decisions on what's best for you on a paid option. And the first one is playlist submission services. So this is not the kind of thing where you pay a certain amount of money for a certain amount of streams. Those things never work. I wouldn't trust those things. I never have trust those things and I never will. But a playlist submission service are legit services that connect artists with playlist curators. So the one that comes to mind and the one that I've used before is Submit Hub. So basically what Submit Hub is, it's a website, you go to it, you upload your song, you buy a certain amount of tokens. They don't do it with money, they do it with tokens and you kind of, depending on the pitch you're making, there's tokens that you spend for that. It's not terribly expensive, but you can go in there. It's really cool because you can kind of filter your your search, you can filter by genre, and you can actually pitch to not only curators, but you can pitch to blogs and other social media influencer platforms. So there's kind of a lot of versatility in there and that's pretty cool. Like I've had songs that have wound up getting write-ups on blogs, getting shared on other people's social media platforms. So that's been a really cool service for me. I haven't done as well, to be honest, on the actual song submission part, as far as getting on actual playlists. It has worked, but I found most success personally with Submit Hub through getting on blog posts and influencers. So there's other services like Submit Hub, but that was the only one I wanted to cover here because that's the only one I personally used before. But that's a great paid option. And because you're not having to spend a ton of money, I mean, obviously you can spend a ton of money, but it can take a little investment to kind of play around with it and see how it works. And honestly, depending on your genre or your style, it might be a great fit for you. So that's the first paid option is playlist submission services like Submit Hub. So the second paid option is music marketing services. Now, again, just like with before, this is another slightly dangerous, slightly sketchy slope to be standing on because there's a lot of people out there that maybe aren't going to be able to deliver what they promise. So I'm super hesitant to talk about these type of things, but I think it's important because there are music marketing agencies out there that can and do help artists get their music out further than they could by themselves because marketing is a really great skill and there's some great marketers out there and there's some people that see how tough it could be as an artist to get your music out there so they specialize in music marketing they'll do things like pitch to playlists for you they may have relationships with other playlists so that's one side of it they may actually even do some development with you as far as figuring out how to help you with the right artwork with the right sound you know it's more of the coaching mentor development side and then another thing too is that they might help run Facebook type ads or, you know, YouTube ads and things like that, because that's a whole nother thing. And that's actually the last topic sneak peek, but they can help you do that too. So it's just really important to vet those people out. And like I always mention, you know, go to the CIS Facebook group, ask around, see who people have used, see what they recommend by their experiences. Because like we always know, if you have a bad experience somewhere, you tell a hundred people, if you have a good experience, you'll tell a few people. So it's good to ask these questions to find out who's good. But there are music marketing agencies out there that can definitely help you get your music farther, faster than we could on our own as the second paid option. And number three, like I just talked about, is running Facebook type ads, Facebook, YouTube, whatever the platform is, but it's running ads through social media services. Now this can be a very technical and difficult thing to understand, to be honest, especially as a lot of these ad platforms change very frequently. I've personally run Facebook ads before and it could be very difficult and honestly it could be very frustrating to understand what buttons to press to make sure that you are reaching the audience because that's the key, that's the great thing is because these social media platforms track literally everything we do, which is, you know, kind of alarming, but they do that and they know habits and tendencies and all these things. So through Facebook specifically, you can really niche down and target exactly who you want, who's the people that are most likely to listen and actually engage with the music, which is really powerful. But when they're always kind of changing how the interface looks, when they're changing what each thing means, there's 20 different types of ads to run. It's hard to know which is right. Like I said, I've done it before and it is can be a great tool to get your music seen and heard, but 
pointing back to the last point, you know, these might be the kind of things that could possibly be better use of resource and time by hiring an agency to help you run these ads. Of course, that adds to the overall cost because then you're not only paying for the ad spend itself, but then you're also paying for people to manage and monitor your ads. So that's something to consider. But also, you can kind of pick your price. So if you decided, I want to try running a Facebook ad, I'm going to go and do some YouTube searching, try to figure out how I can do that today. You could start with a dollar a day. You know, it doesn't have to be this huge expense, but if you can figure out how to dial in your audiences and there's A-B testing, there's there's so much to it. But if you can figure out as a, as a small experiment to say, I'm going to try running a Facebook ad, do a dollar a day. You know, after a week, you spent $7. Did it actually do anything for you? Was it a waste of $7? For one, $7 isn't a ton of money to waste, especially if you start to see some positive results. So Facebook ads, although paid, is definitely a way to get your music out there with paid promotion. So that's it. I hope breaking it down to the free and the paid options, three of each kind, will help kind of shed some light on the different options out there. Like I said in the beginning, there's a million things you could do, maybe 55 gazillion things you could do. I don't know. It's all random numbers anyways. But there's so many things you could do, and I hope that at least getting an idea of the different categories that are out there will help you make the most informed decision you can. And two, I'd say always lean on your community. Jump into the Facebook community on CIS Facebook community. Ask some questions. See what people have done and lean on their experiences because that is how we all kind of can grow together is by learning from each other and what we've done, what's worked and what hasn't worked. And also one more bonus is that you can use these in tandem. You could do some free and you could do some paid. You could be pitching to curators. You can set yourself a goal of pitching to five curators every single day. You can pitch to social media. You can build your social media following, you know, with weekly posts, daily posts, whatever you can do. Also, you can be building a playlist because that only takes one time. Build a playlist and listen to it. You know, kind of do all those free options and then you can kind of decide, hey, this song is streaming better than the other song. Maybe I should run some ads. Maybe I'll try experimenting with a dollar a day ad on Facebook. Or maybe I'll hire a marketing agency to help me push this even further. Maybe there's some vetting and some development on their end. Or, you know, jump into Submit Hub. Try to throw a song out there. See if that works. You know, you can take small investment. You don't have to spend $1,000 every time you want to promote your music and pay for it. You can start with super small amounts of money and just experiment and see how far that goes. So I would say running these things in tandem ultimately of course, will help you when you kind of do all these things together. And I want to know, comment below and let me know what type of promotions you've used. Have you done some of these free ones? Have you done paid? Have you done something I haven't mentioned here? I'd love to see it. So comment below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And I can't wait to see you next Friday at 5am on the CIAS podcast.